I'm not angry. I'm not disappointed. I'm in that weird kind of space, people, where I don't know what to feel because for me, it feels like I'm watching the same old movie and expecting a different ending. As I said in my live stream, how much times are you going to watch Boys in the Hood and hope Ricky doesn't die? It's the same old things. And I kind of, I guess if, if you say I'm frustrated, it's more because this game against Everton is a microcosm. It's just a small penny dropped in a, in a fountain of the problems about Arsenal. I don't want to keep sounding like a broken record, but when you don't address certain flaws in the squad in the transfer market, when you're relying on certain players to get it over, over the line, when you have an inability to break down low blocks or no solutions to that, when you lock down our right-hand side, or I wouldn't even say the right-hand side was locked down, but Saka and Odegaard aren't really doing it really and truly, and you've got nothing down the left-hand side but frustrating left-wingers between Martinelli, Trossard, the non-existent, literally, Raheem Sterling, who I can't get onto, or Gabriel Jesus when he comes on. It's the same old stories, man. And I, I think, people, you know, you can sit here and say we coach the win and all of that. That's not how football games are played. It's like we're trying to win boxing matches on points rather than land a knockout blow. You know, if you have mid and low blocks, which no disrespect to Everton was expected, you're going to get something, you know, big up Everton because they, you know, Pickford man of the match, you know, they rid their, I wouldn't even say they rid their lot, but they cleared the chances they had to clear. They were, they had a stubborn unit. I guess they'll be thinking as to why Decore failed to put the ball in the back of the net. You're in issues. Obviously, the corner boys was non-existent. The set pieces were non-existent. And now, when you're not, when there's evident issues with our play in open play and we're not scoring from set pieces, you don't get any points. And it feels like we're defeating ourselves before we talk about the opposition. Of course, no two games are alike, but it was a case of the same old fundamental issues and flaws that plagued us against Fulham. And I know we scored from a set piece against Fulham, but I think Everton, Fulham and Monaco have done very well at marking us over set pieces, which that's down to the set piece coach to, you know, to evolve and adapt and things. And I'm not criticising him because if there was any fragment of this football club that that that, that is that can't demand more, it's that really and truly. And when you assemble a squad like this, when you're carrying a lot of passengers like this, when you, you know, Mikel Arteta, I do think you're a good manager in many ways, but I think when thing, when 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 spanners are thrown in the works, I don't think you've currently at this moment in time found, found solutions, really. We're relying on people that are not clinical to score goals. I think the left wing has its issues in itself, but we still haven't evidently replaced Granite Xhaka. I like Moreno and I'm not criticising him, but the only benefit of me at this moment of seeing Mik uh, Mikel Moreno, Odegaard and Declan Rice is Declan Rice plays as a six. You know, shout out to Lewis Skelly as well. Shout out to Ethan who didn't do too much, but it's nice to see the young bulls got some minutes. I think if anything, you know, Jorginho's cameo was half decent. Um, not that that's anything to scream and shout about. It's two points dropped. It really is two points dropped. You know, again, the beautiful thing about football is you can't look on paper. But going into the game, Everton can't buy a win this season. They're struggling. They're flirting. with. I don't think they get relegated, but they're flirting with relegation. And they can't get... A point really does nothing for either side. It doesn't close the gap when Liverpool, the rare occasions they drop points like today. Chelsea are licking their lips. I know they play down the title race, but they would want to win. The more you win, the more you're in that conversation. City at this moment in time, it's funny how we're speaking about Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal in relation to the title race, but we're not speaking about City. The, the reality is the more people that drop points around them, the better chance they have of getting their own season together. So, yeah, man, in, it, it, there's a lack of solutions from Mikel Arteta. There's a lack of creativity. There's relying on players that are not cut on it. We didn't do what we needed to do in the market. And it, we know, as I said, the mid blocks, low blocks, you have half a chance against Arsenal. It's like an open book and it feels like we're defeating ourselves or shooting ourselves in the foot before we talk about the opposition. And as I said, no disrespect to Everton because Pickford, quality today you know uh, the only the only positive is that Raya got a clean sheet we owed him a couple but yeah there's only you know in terms of being in a title a keyword being in a title challenge you know doing okay in the Champions League being around and stuff like that we've got enough we're doing enough when you want to talk about getting over the line Arteta is not addressing stuff we're carrying too many players and there's way more answers sorry more questions than answers and again how many times is this going to happen life like football is harsh it will keep showing you the same thing again and again until you take heed and learn the lesson which we're failing to do. So I can't be surprised that it's another week we've dropped points, really and truly. Two points dropped. And again, I'm being very harsh. The context is a different, but Fulham and Everton draws, Liverpool draw um, from a winning position, City draw, you know, Brighton draw, you know, not turning up at, at Newcastle, unacceptable. Worst performance for me would have been Bournemouth, dropped too many points.
you know, drop too many points. I again, math, math, maybe I'm being emotional and mathematically you can still fight and that's all you've got. And you can have saving grace that everybody, including us, is going to drop points. But for me, it's about how you're playing. It's about addressing these issues. It's about having that stardust. It's about how good you are at your worst or when you're in moments like this. How do you get out of it? How are you playing? I don't think you can honestly look at that team right now beyond having copium and drinking positive helium or, or smoking positive helium and being on some strong drinks that you can think Arsenal are going to win a title or anything serious. So with that, do what you need to do in the in the quarterfinals this week. Try and win against Crystal Palace. But I, I've mentally checked out. I'll be real. I, I mentally checked out a long time ago. Like just At this point, just supporting my football team riding the highs and lows with you lot hope for the best prepare for the worst miss opportunity serious regression more questions than answers and serious questions over these players over Mikel Arteta and what we're doing as a football club <laughs>